and September 11th, 2001, the United States was attacked by Muslim terrorists. Four of our airplanes were hijacked. Two of them hit the two World Trade Center towers. One of them hit once and another hit another time. Um, Your book shows a picture of that attack somewhere right now. I don't seem to be able to find it, but it's, it's there. Um, anyway, the attack apparently was orchestrated by Osama bin Laden, who was not part of the attack. I've had it all. The four airplanes, two of them hit the World Trade Center towers, another one hit the Pentagon. Now the fourth one. The passengers on the plane decided to take over, and they brought the plane down in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Now, most of you never heard of the little town of Somerset. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of time in Somerset, so I'm familiar with it. Uh, cool area, mountainous area, in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Um, small town, but it made national moves when a, one of the terrorist planes. And we don't, we'll never know where this plane was intended for. We suspect it was either intended to hit the White House and the president was not there. The president for the time was either intended to hit the White House or might have been intended to hit the Capitol. Uh, we simply don't know, but wherever it was intended to hit, it hit nowhere. It came down in the middle of a field in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Um, the reason for the attack. Now, folk, this is something we, we have to understand, these people. As much as we can, we have to understand them. Here's why. It had nothing to do with the fact that the United States for Israel, but why did, why did Osama bin Laden hate us? Now, here's the excuse he used. That in helping the Arabs, all right, Saddam Hussein, after he took over Kuwait, he intended to take over Arabia next. So the United States moved into its armies and, moved and pitched its armies in Arabia, which is right next to Kuwait. If you know your map, Arabia is not next to it. And we used Arabia as a base of operations in which to defend Arabia from an attack by Saddam Hussein. Well, or something Laden said that you put American troops on holy Arabian soil, and these American troops set up chapels, chapman had set up Christian chaplains, which is forbidden in Arabia. And they set up Christian chaplains on holy, and Christian chapels on holy Arabian soil. And folk, any of you know anything about military life, you can't send troops into combat without allowing them to go through religious ceremony first. But no, we don't allow that. So basically because we were going over there to defend them. And also, now I don't mean to be offensive to anyone in here, but Saddam, uh, Osama bin Laden found it offensive that the United States sent in his army some black Christian women. Now again, no offense against any black Christian women. I was in the army once, and yes, the American army takes in blacks, and the American army takes in Christians, and the American army takes in black Christian women. And yes, the American army was capable and strong enough to defend Arabia against an attack by Saddam Hussein. And yes, the American army was strong enough to win. But nevertheless, we couldn't just send Muslim troops over there because we wouldn't have had enough of an army to win. We had to send troops such as we had. And we defended Arabia, but nevertheless, he took offense at it, and the result was he attacked us. Now, folk, how can you make peace with people? I mean, uh, Osama bin Laden was once our friend. He turned against us because we helped defend his native country, Arabia, against their enemies. How can you make peace with a man like that? Anybody have any ideas? Now, there is another story. That's Saddam, I mean, pardon, Osama bin Laden had had sex with an American girl, and she had told the whole world what a lousy performer he was. And uh, this had upset him greatly. Um, that story got out, too. Again, Osama bin Laden remained hidden for many years. And eventually the United States was able to move in and take him out. Now I had a student in my class just Thursday say, did the United States really kill Osama bin Laden? I said, well, we have to take our president's word for it. 
Didn't they drop him in the ocean or something? What's that? Didn't they drop him in the ocean or something like that? Yeah, see, he was living in this house in Pakistan. And we uh, knew a little about what the house was like, so we got a model of the house and had our uh, seals. Our, the seals are extremely cracked troops, highest troops we have. And in fact, you don't choose to be a seal. If the army likes you, they'll pick you. And, give, and we gave these seals super, super training. And then on a given, supposedly, we had watched more satellites and actually seen Saddam Hussein out. And again, some of you might know this better than I do. I had a man at Lockheed show me the picture of my house taken from a satellite. Again, if any of you have seen this. And they could take a lot of detail, including an individual. And suppose they'd seen from orbit Saddam or Osam bin Laden getting out of his, this house and walking around out in his back porch a little bit. They supposedly then knew he was there, but all along they pretended that they didn't know it. And the house, the place was in Pakistan, right smack dab within seeing distance of what amounts to Pakistan's West Point. It was near the training facility where that West, where that Pakistan trained its officers. And folks, can you believe the Pakistanis had to have known he was there. And supposedly, again, Pakistan is our friend. And they were hiding our number one enemy. No, I can't say that for sure. Their number one enemy was hiding in sight of their West Point. I mean, our number one enemy was hiding in sight of their West Point. Now, again, we moved in, and there's been a movie made about how we moved in with our seals, took him out, and then offered his body to several Arab countries, not one of so he'd keep to, to keep from offending the Muslims further, we threw his body into the sea, which is illegal and under certain conditions, uh, to where no, because no nation wanted to take him in. Yes? Um, I heard that they actually didn't well, uh, okay, go ahead, tell your story. There's like, I don't know, I'm just, I, just, I don't know like the whole story behind it, but there's like a controversy over that, that they really didn't throw the body in the ocean and he's probably still alive. That is the same point that this student was making four days ago in my other class. There are folk, like I said, we have to, all we can do is take our president's word for it. Um, of course, there are rumors, were rumors circling for many years that Adolf Hitler was alive. That he had escaped and uh, the Russians claimed they had the body, well, but guess what, they never showed it. But they said they dug up the body of Hitler and his wife, you know, and uh, they had it. Well, okay, where is it? Mute silence. So uh, again, um, Stalin once told the world that Hitler had escaped, but um, Anyway, that he had a means to where he could get out of there really fast. And uh, so many of those Nazis went to Latin America, by the way. And there were persons who claimed to have seen Hitler in Latin America also. But again, uh, you see, El if people are seeing Elvis all the time, Elvis Presley, Elvis sightings. Yeah, people we'll see Michael Jackson. Still yeah, 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 Michael Jackson, yeah. Even though in the case of Elvis, well, they say, oh, yeah, Elvis's body you saw in the casket was just a wax model. And I don't know about Michael Jackson's body now, but Elvis's was a wax model. And one person commented just how waxy it looked. Well, all right, so, anyway. Um, yeah, you see these, well, I'll tell you something, folks. I mean, this is for real. When a close friend of mine died when I was in college, a lot of times I'd see people who resembled this girl in a lot of ways. And ever since then, when a person close to me dies, I'll be walking down the street and see people who resemble them. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I mean, even after, uh, of course, I've never met Prince, but when Princess Diana died, uh, I went to a Braves game and I saw a lot of women there who seemingly had some resemblance to Princess Diana. <laughs> I mean, it's a natural thing we have. I mean, we see people who have something about them that reminds us of a deceased person. Uh, and we, we see them often. Um, even people we haven't met, like Elvis Presley. As for Saddam Hussein, yeah, I've heard that, I've heard it. Um, it seemed like one of you wrote a paper on another controversial topic entitled, we never, Did We Ever Go to the Moon? Um, I think we did. Oh, okay, I think we went. I mean, if, if you don't want to acknowledge it, you don't have to. But, uh, I met a man who went to the moon now one time, astronaut me. He was an artist, he knew a lot of pictures of it, uh, but I mean, uh, hey, I believe it. Uh, I saw a shuttle launch one time also. And, um, 
Anyway. All right. Anyway, we had conflicts in the Middle East. Um, essentially, the Middle Eastern world, I, right, when I was in college, more than 40 years ago, I took a course on recent American history. And I recently dug up that old book, I still have, the old time, it was had some, more, more than 700 pages. I think, did we ever mention the Middle Eastern world? So I got to looking in the index, where did it have Iraq and Iran, and folk, Iraq and Iran was not mentioned in 700 pages of a book entitled Since 1900, of the history of the United States from 1969. That's how unimportant it was. During my, I mean, my teachers would talk about the rise of Islam, but other than that, we ignored it. What happened? Well, the, Islam, the Islamic world got their hands on some oil and found that there was oil beneath their sands. And all of a sudden, they began to assert themselves again. Now, um, okay, I had a very pro-Islamic teacher when I was in the U University of Tennessee. And he had us read a book one time and said, the Islamic world is rumbling. This was in 19, or the book was written in the 1950s. There's some rumblings going on, and the Islamic world might revive and rise again. Well, it has. But for many, many years, we just, we could ignore it because it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't a big part of our, um, of our lifestyle. But then, then they discovered oil and a bunch of them got really rich from the discovery of oil. And um, your book shows a map on page 883 of some of the big oil producing fields. You get the impression that the oil is only in a small part of the Middle East, and of course a lot of us in Kuwait. Now, here's the latest I've heard that we have found in the Dakotas enough oil to where we could just simply we just tell the Arab world we don't need your oil anymore, hurry on you, and we could supply the whole world with oil. And the world would not need our oil anymore. Our president cites environmental reasons won't let us go after, but the oil is there. Have any of you heard this? This story is told, yes, that uh, it's there in the Dakotas. Uh, we did find a lot of oil in Alaska and ran a pipeline down from Alaska that's uh, helped us to not be as dependent on foreign oil. Um, something else I must say about oil. In 1972, I read a magazine in which they said that the world will run out of oil in 50 years. I said, well, I might be around and I'll wait for it. My dad scoffed. He said, there's an unlimited supply of oil. We're not going to run out. And there's this oil shortage. There's a supposed oil shortage. All right, fast forward. Since that article was written, 44 years have gone by. No, 40, 40, 42 years, 43 years now have gone by since that article was written. Are we about to run out? Instead of what has happened is, we have found a whole lot more oil. We also discovered the earth beneath our feet is producing oil faster than we're burning it up. So basically my dad was right. He might not have known how right he was. Now the oil we're using is harder and harder to get to. And it's taking some re harder and harder to refine. And the price is going up, up and up. I mean, hey, folk, when I was in high school, the average price for a gallon of gas was remained 32 cents a gallon. 32 cents a gallon for many, many years. Now, we can't produce it that cheaply anymore because the oil is harder and harder, but it's there. And the refining um, takes some doing to refine. But again, you may have noticed at the pump, the price of gas has gone up seven cents, I believe, in the last week. My wife made a slight mistake. She said, I'm not going to gas up today. I'm going to wait till Monday when I need it. And wait till Monday when I think the price might be cheaper. You know the results. Come Monday, the price was even higher still. It's a risk you run when you do that. Anyway, I said, you better go ahead back because the trend is upward. Now, of course, a lot of experts now believe the trend is leveled off. Average price, $3.70 a gallon more than 10 times, well actually more than 11 times what it was 40 years ago. But we're not about to run out. 